I'm Doug, and on behalf of everyone at Mission Engineering, it's my pleasure to welcome you to this video on the brand new 529X pedalboard power supply. It's got eight 9-volt outputs, each of which can run up to 500 milliamps, which means it can easily power traditional stops from manufacturers like Boss, more power-hungry offerings from companies like Eventide and Strymon, and with a convenient 4-to-1 parallel adapter, you can also power modelers like HX Stomp, HX Stomp XL, Podgo, Podgo Wireless, and the Bosch GT1000 core. Speaking of which, at the top of the video, you heard me utilizing that, but powered by the 529M, which we're also going to be talking about in this video. That's an ultra-compact USB power converter that enables you to run your pedal board off of a power bank. Now, if you've never tried that, or maybe you're a little hesitant, imagine you're sitting out underneath the stars, you got some USB speakers, and you're just playing for the universe. It is an awesome experience. Now, the other thing about that is, for those of us who don't want to have an idea slip away, you can also use it in more private environments. All right, to slice and dice all this good stuff, we're going to break this down into three main areas, each of which is linked down below in the show notes. We're going to start off by talking about the 529X, then the 529M, and then the combination of the two, which enables you to put together some pretty straightforward pedal boards, as well as some more extreme things. Before we get to the content, in case you haven't already subscribed to the channel, want to invite you to do so. Please don't forget to ring the bell so you'll know when more videos are going to go online. With that said, let's get to it. Before we go over the components that ship with the 529X, I want to take a quick moment and recap some of the stuff we covered at the top of the video. The 529X has eight 9-volt outputs, each of which are capable of delivering up to 500 milliamps. Pretty straightforward. With one rather important caveat. You can't load up all eight outputs and run them simultaneously at 500 milliamps. The total amount of current that you can put out of this thing safely is right about 1.5 amps. We're going to come back to that in just a moment. In the meantime, let's take a look at what comes in the box. First of all, there's the AC power supply with all the various adapters you need so you can safely run this anywhere in the world. You get your eight power cables for running current to your favorite pedals. You get the 4 to 1 parallel adapter so you can power modelers like HX Stomp, dot, 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 etc. And you also get the 2.1 to 2.5 barrel adapter for being able to run power to said modelers. So a moment ago, I mentioned that the maximum amount of current the 529X wants to deliver is right around 1.5 amps. It's really important that you not underpower your pedals. So as a frame of reference, I want to talk about some of the requirements of the more popular pedals on the market so we can kind of talk apples and apples, if we will. All right, and all of this is in 9 volts because it's a 9 volt power supply. All right, at the very bottom of the list in terms of power requirement is the Dunlop GCB95 wah, and that just wants to see 0.43 milliamps. That's next to nothing. Boss DS1, 4 milliamps. The Analog Man King of Tone, somewhere between 6 and 10 milliamps. The Jet Pedals Revelation Reverb 2.0, 200 milliamps. This is important how Strymon puts this, the timeline. 300 milliamp minimum required. So they really want to make sure there's enough power there to do what they need to do. All right, and what Eventide has to say here is equally important. By the way, the H9 can run at either 9 volts or 12 volts. So the H9, first of all, what they have to say is this. The current requirement is 500 milliamps at power up and 400 milliamps in normal operation. Now, what is that all about? The folks at Mission like to refer to that initial firing up of the pedal as inrush current. And it's akin to you come home to a cold house, the lights are off, it takes a certain amount of power to get things going. And that's what we refer to in Mission World as inrush current. So you want to make sure you have plenty of power on tap. Now, a moment ago, I mentioned that, you know, everything here that we've been talking about is 9 volts. Now, the 529M has the ability to deliver a multitude of different voltages. So let's take a moment and talk about that. So the 529M is one of the coolest pieces of gear I've ever played. Why? I didn't think that I was going to fall in love with being able to use a power bank to supply power to my pedal board until I tried it. I was like, wow, this is amazing. For example, those of you who play at church, this past Sunday, I happened to use a 529M in combination with the 529X at a church service. And at this particular venue, there have been times I'm like, you put me here, but there's no power. 
If you play at church, you know what I'm talking about. So not having to depend on power for your pedal board is a big deal. Now, in terms of the power bank itself, there are a number of ways that you can go with that. If you're looking for some that Mission has tested, check out the website there. Lots of information about that. Now, here's the thing. You can also, as a backup, utilize something like this little kind of USB wall board. And speaking of which, one of the things I love about the 5 to 9M is on the bottom side, there's kind of a little rotary dial that you can use a small screwdriver to adjust as you toggle between 5, 9, 12, 15, and 18 volts. For example, at 12 volts, I can power my quad cortex. At 15 volts, I can power one of my much beloved radial pedals that I often get a little frustrated that they're 15 volts, but in so doing, I can get rid of another wall board. All right. Now, that said, the variable voltage, whether you're using it just to supply power to the 529X or using a second one in combination with supplying power to it, opens up a whole world of possibilities. So let's talk about that. One of the great things about the combination of the 529X and the 529M, especially if you add a second 529M, is it kind of gives you a modularity so you can kind of add or subtract things to your rig. For me, I've got lots of different types of music that I play. Usually, I've got multiple pedal boards that are happening at the same time. So being able to move components around, for me, is a big deal. And not everything that I use, for example, the Quad Cortex, is running at 9 volts. And this is where the ability to kind of mix and match components is a big deal. All right, a moment ago, I was talking about the church rig that I set up that was using a combination of the 529M and the 529X. Worked great. Was using a power bank. I was able to practice before church started. I was able to do church rehearsal, did the service, and by the time I was done, I still had 50% of the battery life left. That was really cool. Again, more information about approved batteries on the Mission Engineering website. Now, adding a second 529M opens up a whole other world of possibilities when you need to mix voltage. So the board you're looking at now is primarily a 9-volt board with the exception of the Quad Cortex. Quad Cortex wants to see 12 volts. We talked about that a moment ago. So by adding a second 529M, problem solved. And again, power banks provide lots of power. I was super impressed in every situation of how much power I was able to get out of the various power banks that I've got. And again, you can always have a hot swappable backup if you need to go to AC. Now, one very important caveat. The 529X is a 9-volt power supply, but it wants 12 volts of power going on into it. So that means that if you're going to supply power to the 529X from the 529M, you got to remember on the bottom of the 529M to set it at 12 volts. Otherwise, it's going to be crickets. All right, I want to thank you for checking out this video. For more information about the 529X and 529M, please visit the Mission Engineering website. And again, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I want to invite you to do so. And please don't forget to ring the bell. Thanks again for watching. Cheers.